Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Today is episode 5 of Azure Zero to Hero series and in this video we will cover the overview of Azure networking or the basics of Azure networking. Literally this is the point where a lot of people quit learning Microsoft Azure and the reason is quite obvious the concepts like virtual network subnets routes network security groups and application security groups are not that easy to understand so what i'm going to do in today's video is i will explain these concepts by correlating them to real world use cases so that you will never forget these concepts so please watch this video till the end now before i start with explaining the day five let me quickly tell you this is a github repository that i'm going to maintain throughout this series device notes is available in this github repository and you can also find the course syllabus right from day 1 to day 25 so please start this github repository so that you get the continuous updates now let's proceed with understanding the concepts for day 5 let's start with virtual network or also known as vnet whenever we try to understand a complicated concept always start with understanding why why azure has started this concept called virtual network let's understand what happens if this concept called virtual network does not exist then we will understand why or what is the reason the virtual network concept is introduced let's say there are two devops engineers one devops engineer at nike two devops engineer at puma and both of them wants to create virtual machines because azure has thousands of customers and millions of users let's say one of the devops engineers at nike request for a virtual machine in the east us region and availability zone 1 devops engineer at puma also request for a virtual machine in the east us region and availability zone now both of these requests are taken by the resource manager and it processes the request understands that okay both of them wants to create virtual machine in the same availability zone so request goes to the particular data center availability zone is nothing but a data center so request goes to this particular data center in the east us region and there are multiple physical servers in one particular data center assume there is a server called x this is a physical server and both of the virtual machines got created in the same physical server nike gets their virtual machine on the physical server x of availability zone 1 and puma also gets their virtual machine on the physical server x now this is a very very big problem this creates a very big security concern because for some reason if puma's virtual machine got hacked for some security reason if their virtual machine is compromised now the hacker because already has access to this particular server it's easy to hack this particular network as well or this particular virtual machine as well if these virtual machines has some data related to the customers it's even a big problem so this is a common problem i mean it's not problem with azure if the concept of virtual network in aws we call it as vpc if this concept does not exist then this would be the scenario so understanding this the cloud providers came up with a concept aws calls it vpc and azure calls it virtual network so let's talk about azure so this concept came into picture which is called as vnet and what happens in vnet is if you consider this as the east us region and there can be multiple availability zones right zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 let's assume now what customers can do is nike can request for a virtual network within the public cloud so what azure does is within this particular availability zones azure can create a virtual network right this is their entire networking within this azure can create a virtual network for nike 
if devops engineer at nike request for a virtual virtual network so what azure says is okay this is the virtual network that we have restricted for you and now if puma requests for a virtual machine it cannot be created in this particular network because nike has already restricted it or nike has already blocked it this particular concept is called as virtual network now similarly puma will also request for a virtual network it might be created here it can be created here so this is how public cloud providers right the reason why i am explaining public cloud providers because this concept exists in all the cloud providers this is how the security is managed how one customer's data is secure from other customers within the concept of public cloud because we keep talking about public cloud but how is public cloud secure you might you might ask me that abhishek uh, microsoft azure is maintaining the data of lot of customers if i am a user my data is kept with microsoft azure other data is also kept with microsoft azure how the public cloud providers secure this is because of this concept called virtual network so they the concept of virtual network is that it's a logical isolation of a network within the physical network of microsoft azure now you might ask me abhishek how many virtual networks can i create you can create any number of virtual networks if you have microsoft subscription you can request any number of virtual networks and microsoft azure will create that many for you now that doesn't mean that for one organization you can create only one virtual network that is not true so for an organization you can create number of virtual network depending upon the requirement that your organization has for example a project within nike let's call it as xyz project if they want to onboard on to the microsoft azure then you get a requirement as a devops engineer that xyz project wants to onboard on the microsoft azure and you can request for a virtual network now the most important question is how do you define the size of the virtual network this is important right because you can create a virtual network but what should be the size that is how many number of ip addresses so the size can be measured using the number of ip addresses that is equivalent to the number of resources that can be created within this virtual network it can be number of virtual machines number of databases etc so this can be defined using the cidr which is a standard which explains the size of virtual network for example the most common standard is slash 16 that means 65536 ip addresses if you want to understand more how did i come up with this particular parameter how is slash 16 equals to 65536 there is a dedicated video that i made it is more than 30 minutes where i have explained cidr in very simple way so you can watch that i'll give you the link in the description but let's say you have decided that for azure xyz project that is nike you have created this vnet with 65536 ip addresses now once you created this is a virtual network let's say the next important thing is how do you use this virtual network effectively okay you got this virtual network with this many ip addresses but there can be different kinds of applications there can be web applications right there can be business logic applications and there can be databases if you understand carefully web applications can be accessed from the internet there is no problem whereas the business logic applications and databases for sure should not be accessed from the internet and if you are talking about protocols like ssh right obviously nobody should be able to access or ssh to the database so how do you effectively use this virtual net is basically you can logically split this virtual network into multiple subnets this is one example that i am sharing but this requirement can vary so here i am giving an example where you can put the web applications inside a particular subnet you can put the business logic applications inside a different subnet and you can put the databases inside a separate subnet called as subnet db what is the advantage that you get one is you got the logical separation that instead of using one virtual network you have categorized this into multiple sub parts and on each sub part you can apply your security groups or you can apply your security 
what kind of security you might ask me one basic example is nobody should be able to ssh to the databases nobody from the internet should have access to the databases whereas people from the internet might have access to the web applications which is quite possible today you can access the website or the web application the static page of any website that is hosted on the internet but you will not be able to access their internet but these applications like when you hit their web application the request goes to their business logic and business logic will hit their database so in a nutshell the databases should not be accessed from the internet right but databases can be accessed by the business logic applications so this is one particular criteria where you can define this as a security rule on the database that you have created for the subnet and for this particular subnet where you have bunch of virtual machines you might have different security configuration for this web applications that you have created you might have a different security configuration that's why creating subnets is very important and when you create this subnets during the creation of subnet again you can mention the cidr so cidr is very important you can understand and you can watch that video after you complete watching this video you can go to the link in the description and understand cidr in better way but do not disturb your flow at this point of time so again the size of the subnets that is the number of ip addresses of a particular subnet can be understood using cidr so you have created assume that a web subnet app subnet and db subnet and i have explained for the db subnet you can create a specific security rule and security configuration but abhishek how do you do that so for that there is something in azure called as nst or it is also called as network security group and this network security group defines the security of a particular subnet or you can also create network security group for a particular instance as well but it is better to define the network security groups for a subnet where the configuration will be applied to all the databases if this particular subnet has 100 databases also this particular configuration that you have defined applies to all the databases in that particular subnet otherwise you can define it to particular instance as well best example is the jenkins application that we defined that we created in the last class we deployed in a virtual machine and what we did we applied network security groups to that particular virtual machine only where we allowed the internet access to this virtual machine got it now you might have a question but abhishek in the last class when we created jenkins machine we did not do all this configuration i did not request for a vnet i did not request for subnets so what happens is azure aws any public cloud provider for easy onboarding on their platform they will create default subnet they will create default uh, vnet all of these configuration so that you can play with it but when you work in your organization you don't use that default subnets default vnets you create your virtual network and you create your own subnets so that is what i'm talking about now so what does nsgs do nsgs are capable of adding security to your bunch of virtual machines in a particular subnet or you can also apply it to a particular instance right the best example is what we talk now let's write this one more time so let's say this is your entire virtual network and within virtual network now for easy understanding let's just split into this two subnets one is where your web application and the business logic applications are located for easy understanding and here you have your database applications and the logic for this is everyone can access this from the internet the web applications and the logic for this is only dbs should not be accessed from the internet and only the applications that is the business logic applications should access this particular thing right so you can simply go to the nsgs and you can define that this particular subnet can access the database that is the cidr block range of a particular ip address range can access my databases and anyone who is coming from the internet should not be accessed so this is the job of nsg now you might wonder but abhishek what exactly is asg okay so asg is basically enhances or 
increases the capability of NSG. So in real world, we will use NSG plus ASG and you can do the ASG configuration using NSG as well. But ASG will make your life very simple. I'll give you a best example. Now using NSG, if you define that the CIDR block range, let's assume this subnet has a CIDR block range of 10.0.3.0/16 and this particular thing or 3.0.24 and if you want to say that all the instances can access the database then what you can simply do is you can go to the network security group and within the network security group you can just define that anything that is coming from the source okay what is source source anything that is coming from 10.0.3.0/24 okay that is all of the instances in this particular subnet can access the databases this in this particular subnet okay in the destination you can provide all the databases so this is what you will define in the nsg but using asg you can go a step ahead and what you can say is okay the web applications if there are 10 web applications and if there are five business logic applications only the business logic applications should access the db even within this subnet where there are web applications plus the business logic applications i only want the business logic applications to access my db so for that what you can do you can do a step ahead and you can say using asg i will group this app instances okay if there are five business logic applications you can group this five business logic applications into a particular asg and you can say that only this particular instance group should access the database even within this particular subnet only this five or only this 10 should able to access my db so in general it's better to use the combination of nsg plus asg okay so this is how you can improve the security of your instances that is the secure instances that you have in your organization don't worry we will also do a demonstration for this so using the demonstration you will understand this in much better way but for today's class just understand what is vnet what is subnet what is nsg what is asg and just go back and watch my video on cidr i'll put the link in description so that you can also understand this concept which is very important finally just understand what is route table and user defined routes very simple route table and user defined routes just explains how should traffic flow within a particular subnet it is just like providing the directions within a public subnet if someone wants to access this database within a subnet how the traffic should flow within this subnet and reach particular database and i will discuss this much detail like I told you, when we do the demonstration, all these things becomes very clear to you. But for now, just understand the concept. Thank you so much for watching today's video and see you all in the next one. Take care.